It's so exciting to be at my first FSP convention um, and really an honor to be on the first discussion panel, um, FSP Generations, a Dialogue on Leadership. And uh, the intergenerational work we have to do in this party is something that I brought up uh, in my local branch, so I really asked for it when uh, <laughs> I was asked to be a part of this panel. So um, be careful what you wish for or talk about in your local. <laughs> Um, during our discussion, Norma referred to the ideas we had on our plate in an email as juicy fruit, which I agree, it's really a juicy topic um, and embodies, um, in that it embodies two of the great assets of our party. One asset is that we are a rich intergenerational party, as we see right now in this room. And it would be simplistic to describe our group as young and old, because there's a total spectrum of many generations in our party. Um, each one has encountered a specific experience in our culture within the lifeline of the party and also the broader left movement that they operated within. And of course, it's always juicy to talk about leadership. Um, I often refer to our party as a group of leaders and that we're more like a can of concentrate than a pitcher of juice. We're relatively small, yes, but big on ideas and theoretically strong. It's been proven that we make an impact in the movement, as we've discussed already. I really believe that this is a result of the intergenerational character of our party. The continuity of leadership that comes from that is a critical aspect of party building and learning from our experience in the movement. And the fact that we can even have a discussion on intergenerational work is a testament to the staying power of our, th our party's theory and program. Working with people of all ages was a very important part of why I wanted to join the FSP. For instance, one of the conversations I first overheard with the aforementioned comrade Norma, who's an 87-year-old um, comrade from Harlem in New York, <clears throat> was, oh, Norma, you were just in Florida, right? How was that? Very nice, dear. <laughs> Many old people in Florida. They're very nice, but dead in the mind. <laughs> they read the paper, they walk from place to place, but they're very dead in the mind. And I thought to myself, she is clearly not dead in the mind. <laughs> I want to be in political party with her. Being in an organization with someone like Norma Abdullah, who was a translator for Malcolm X and for its new ground for women in Columbia University, that's really a precious experience and that is one of the, of the treasured things that we have as young people in this party, our experiences like that. And being a relatively young member of FSP, I have to say that because I'm 27, means that you're becoming part of the party's history and something much bigger than yourself. And that's empowering and being conscious of that is really a step towards leadership. But once young people really start to move into the territory of leadership, things can get a bit complicated. The fact that these intergenerational movement moments are so rare and precious is because we operate in a system that has very little intergenerational culture. We experience, the culture we experience is often one our experiences can often fall into a nuclear family fallout and parent-child dynamics. And our experience can also be affected by lingering baggage from the authoritarian institutions of education and the patronizing environment of the workplace. We also come from a society that is purposefully ahistorical, which divides young people from their own history and older generations to prevent them from making the connections that yield resistance to the system. And so we come to this organization with that baggage and inexperience. We have few models to work off of, and so our challenge is to then become a model for working intergenerationally, just as under socialist feminism, we are models for men and women working together, queers and straights, and people of color and whites. And our success would create an example that we would put forth to society as a whole. So we as an organization have a, responsible, a responsibility to deal with the issue of generations critically and consciously. We are not immune to tendencies of ageism in our organization. 
While not as destructive a force as racism or sexism, it can cripple our ability to work together. We also have a critical age gap that we really need to address in this party. We have a minority of young leadership, but in order to have a continuity of leadership, we need, to, we need young people to enter new roles of leadership within the organization. And supporting new leadership doesn't just mean training or putting more organizational tasks on their plate. The leadership in this organization needs to allow space for young comrades to create new projects, experiments, and campaigns. I'm not talking about reinventing the wheel with our organizing, but rather creating a space where something is made from the ground up and is injected out into the organization and world at large. Young comrades need to test themselves and their ideas be accountable for the results, make mistakes, and have victories, but outside of the thoroughly established models that we already have within the organization. So, not to speak completely abstractly, uh, our organization recently um, decided that they wanted to do um, something within our newspaper, the youth supplement, I'm so over it, and that was a project that was consciously built with young members, Elias and I, that also highlighted other young members in the party. And um, we were given a degree of autonomy um, to really create something from our perspective that was really imp important. And doing that and failing, doing projects like that and failing means you'll have the support of older comrades that can help us learn the most from the, these experiments through their perspective and success. And Success means that we'll have forged new ground for the party and offered crucial experience to the young person involved. So this can mean new types of study groups, new fractions, new types of events, ways of intervening. And it can also mean changing aesthetic aspects of the party, for instance. The point is to have a culture that is not only accepting of new ideas, but one in which they are viewed as a necessary contribution. Um, and I want to talk concretely for a minute about the duality of responsibility that makes that happen. Older comrades have a responsibility to teach and to train, which, they're, which they are really good at in this party, but also to be open to experimentation. They need to avoid becoming too comfortable in traditions. They need to be conscious of the fact that young members are the minority here, and sometimes criticism of our political shortcomings or missteps can seem like they're coming down from a council of elders. This can stifle a teaching moment for young comrades. As young members, we have a responsibility to be open to leadership and learning from them. Um, as Gary mentioned, um, you know, there is, and we could talk so much about my generation and kind of the context that we come from and how it's different, and I'm sure we will. But there is these factors that affect our generation and um, stigmas in terms of leadership and organization that we, that we have to deal with and overcome. Um, but we also need to not let our reverence for them keeping us, keep us from being critical Unity for the sake of not ruffling feathers is really a false unity, and it's liberalism, really. And it won't last, but it's hard to be critical of people that you really expect and admire, but we owe it to the health of the party to be very honest and speak up. We, of course, need to take very seriously the challenge that the party's continued existence does, does depend on us. And that should not be seen as a burden to young, young membership, but it should be seen as a natural progression of what we already enjoy about our political life in the party and what we think is important about being involved in an organization. And importantly, we, the young members in the party, need to orient to even younger because uh, to speak really c concretely about the younger generation in the party, we're all sort of in our late, many of us are in our late 20s, and so we're, we have an impending opportunity to reach, you know, 17, 18 year olds, even younger, that we're losing if we, we aren't acting on that. So this is an opportunity for us to really inject ourselves to high school students, to, you know, younger, people much younger than us in a different generation than us. And it's important for us to be, to reach them. 
And as, if we, as, if we, as we have already mentioned in our analysis, conditions have the potential to bring many more young people to radical politics. It's necessary for a task to showcase our program and what we're offering in becoming such a part of such a beautiful political family. And if we do that, young people will gravitate towards us and our extremely youthful voice. And that springs from our unrelenting future-mindedness. I think that's a really important aspect of our party. And that's the reason we've all stuck around for as long as we have, be it a year or 40, because we clearly see that we're part of a history that has been going on long before us and a history that will continue to grow out of what we contribute with our time here together. Thank you.